Hey everybody, I want to talk to you guys today about a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2019. It's like one of two top journals in the United States. Uh, it's Journal of American Medical Association in the New England Journal of Medicine in the field of medicine. And it's one of the top five journals in the world. Between those journals and say the British Medical Journal and the, the Lancet, it may even be the top medical journal in the world, JAMA, right? The study is called Effective High Dose Vitamin D Supplementation on Volumetric Bone Density and Bone Strength, a Randomized Controlled Trial. And uh, this study is really interesting because it shows, it shows that uh, healthy adults receiving 4,000 to, to, to 10,000 international units of vitamin D, which is, these are common doses, 10,000 is at the higher end of even in the alternative health world, but some people still take 10,000. They had a lower bone mineral density than those receiving 4, 400 international units per day suggesting potential harm from high dose vitamin D supplementation. So the more they took, the more of this vitamin D that they took, the lower their bone mineral density became, okay? And we'll actually look at some figures here because you'll see a dose response effect. So there's a dose response effect in terms of how high their serum vitamin D was. I need to make, blow this up actually on the screen. Let's, let's just look at the paper. So as we see, there's a dose response effect in terms of how high their vitamin D got as a result of supplementation. And much higher whenever you're on 10,000 than when you are on 4,000 or 400. Um, serum levels are like four times higher among the 10,000ers than among the 400ers. Not quite four times higher, but three times higher, and and almost double that of the uh, four thousand people, the four thousand international unit supplement, supplemented group. And if you look at the total bone mineral density in the radius, which is in the arm. Of those supplemented with 10,000 international units, you see a progressive decline that's much sharper than the 4,000 group and the 400 group. So the more vitamin D they're taking, the larger the decline in bone mineral density. Same thing with the tibia and the leg. Same thing with the tibia and the leg. And there's an indication that, um, that this may actually impact bone strength as well, but it's not statistically significant. And the study may have been underpowered to detect that effect. And furthermore, it might have shown up and popped up more the longer the study went on. So it may take years in order for the difference in bone mineral, the uh, bone strength to pop up. The study was only three years long. It may take like 10 years and then you'll really notice a difference. But there is a difference, a trend towards a difference, if not statistically significant, there is a trend suggesting it might actually be there. So eventually these losses of bone mineral density might lead to losses in strength of the bone. So as a take home message here from this paper, a few things. These uh, further analysis showed that these effects were, were seen primarily in women in a uh, dose response manner, the higher the dose, the worse the effect. And women tend to be prone to osteoporosis so this may enhance the risk of osteoporosis in women. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, people need to stop looking for a miracle cure, no downsides, and start questioning purported miracle cures and, looking, and, and start looking for their downsides. There are a few miracle cures and almost none have no downsides. <clears throat> Take home message, if, if we're gonna make broad based recommendations, first of all, listen to your doctor and talk to your doctor about taking vitamin D supplementation. Unless you need to, you probably should think twice. If you do decide to take a vitamin D su supplement, it might be a good idea to take it on the lower end 
of supplementation doses, not on the higher end, because the lower end is going to guarantee and help guarantee that you're not going to get as much bone mineral density loss. <laughs> That's one thing. I personally take 2000s. I'm always trying to reassess that. Do I need to be taking 2000? Should I take 1000? Should I take 500 instead? Uh, my reasons for doing so, I'll, I'll talk about in another video. Um, there's some evidence that maybe vitamin D supplementation might help with cancer risk. So there's these weird trade-offs here. But that brings us to the last point. If you are, are prone to osteoporosis, if you have lone bone mineral density, if you, have, uh, if you go do a DEXA scan, for example, and you see that your bones are not very dense for your age, right? Think twice about taking vitamin D supplements. Think twice. Now, some people say that vitamin K complements the effect of vitamin D, and there's some evidence to suggest that vitamin K might enhance, uh, um, like, bone, might help bone. A few caveats there. Uh, vitamin K, in terms of MK4, may not be absorbed properly. Only MK7 might actually be absorbed. That's a whole nother, the topic for a whole nother video. So focus on MK7, not MK4. Second, don't take hyper, like hyper physiological doses. Take low doses, take normal doses. Like 100% of RDA, 200% of RDA. Don't take like 12,000% of RDA because you might get other effects by taking too much of the vitamin. Like once you start taking 12,000% of RDA, you're not taking a vitamin anymore, you're taking a drug. So you need to be careful about taking too much vitamin K. So, but if you want to supplement with vitamin K, that's a good, not a bad idea. Best probably to get it from leafy greens. Just eat a lot of leafy greens or eat, eat like one good serving of leafy greens a day. That's going to help your bones. If you're pr prone to bone, bone, bone issues and you want to take vitamin D or you can, alternatively, you can just take leafy greens every day, not take any vitamin D and that's going to help your bones. And you won't have to worry about the vitamin D, but if you really want to take the vitamin D, focus on lower doses, don't do it if you have bone problems. Don't do it if you have bone problems. That would be my, you know, straightforward blunt recommendations. And just talk to your doctor and ask them if you think it's if they think it's a good idea. And then do what you think you should do. But be careful because this is a potential negative effect of vitamin D supplementation. And if you like the video, click like. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to uh, the podcast, The Kevin Bass Show, on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe. Like, keep following me. More subscribers I get, the better. And the better for you guys, too, because I think this is some good stuff. So uh, do that. Like, comment on the video. You can even just say, for the algorithm. Say, for the algorithm on YouTube. That's going to be helpful for me to boost the algorithm, get more people to see the video. More people see the video, the better off people will be. Uh, check out my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram at Kevin and Bass, K-E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S. Check out my Patreon, please, and donate to me. Sign up as a patron on Patreon at Kevin and Bass, K-E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S. -S. Send me a question or questions over Instagram or Twitter. If you have questions as a patron, let me know that you're a patron before sending questions. It helps me to prioritize your questions because you get a lot of questions. And... Um, yeah, like comment, leave a review, leave a rating on Apple iTunes and on Spotify. That would be super helpful as well. Share this widely with your friends, and that would also be fantastic. And I hope you guys are having an excellent day. Peace out.